about we get started? Because it's going to take us a little while to do all the introductions, all the housekeeping stuff. So I'll start. Hello, everybody. I've been talking a whole lot, but not introducing myself yet. I'm Leah Giorgini, and I'm the executive director of ISPS US. Um, I'm originally from England, then I moved to Indiana, and I'm temporarily in Rome, Italy, but moving back to Indiana sometime soon. Uh, and I am super excited to be um, hosting today's webinar or conversation with my friends Sasha and Stephen. Um, before I introduce them, let me tell you a little bit more about ISPS US. So some folks here are probably members or aware of our organization that's been around for, um, for up over 50 years. Um, we're the International Society of Psychological and Social Approaches to Psychosis. So we're an international organization and we're just present, representing the US chapter. So we're all about putting forward new ways of understanding and approaching states of mind often called psychosis, um, really approaches that go against the grain and kind of push the status quo of just the really reductionist biomedical approach. So we're looking at these expansive, humanistic, holistic understandings. Uh, and it's super important for us to elevate multiple voices. So in this space, so often it's the clinicians that hold the power and hold the microphone. But at ISPS, we really want to elevate the voices of people with lived experience, um, family members, advocates, uh, and really promoting human rights, equality, and access to everybody. So we're really excited that you're joining us today. And if you want to know more about us, please visit our new website, uh, isps-us.org. I'm really excited because it's a new website and it looks fantastic, so much better than the old one. So now I can actually tell you about it and really hope that you visit. Uh, and you can join us as a member and get to have these conversations all the time. Watch out too for next month, next week, when we launch our registration for our conference, which is going to be in um, Newark, Delaware, but also hybrid online. So you can join from wherever you are, Canada or Ireland or Spain uh, or Bay Area, as we have lots of people here from the Bay Area. All right, that's my spiel. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, now let me introduce you to our speakers today. Uh, I'll introduce first my friend here, Sasha Altman de Brule. Uh, he is a writer and mental health coach. And when he was 27, he co founded the Icarus Project, a network of peer based mental health support groups and media project with the aim of changing the language and culture of what gets called mental health and illness. After many years working in grassroots radical mental health, he got a master's from the Silverman School of Social Work and worked on the public mental health system in New York City in family therapy and training the peer workforce. He was the lead peer trainer at the Center for Practice Innovations at the New York State Psychiatric Institute. He was also the co-author with Jack McNamara of Navigating the Space Between Brilliance and Madness and author of Maps of the Other Side, The Adventures of a Bipolar Cartographer. He is currently a trainer with the Institute for the Development of Human Arts, IDA, another organization who we, we love, you should check them out. And uh, uh, he also works in private practice. He currently lives in Los Angeles with his partner, Alice, and their twins, Lila and Silas, who are super cute. And I love following um, Sasha's blog about them. And we also have Stephen Nowotniak, who is an occupational therapist like me. So I'm, I'm very into OTs and New York Certified Peer Specialist. He received his master's in occupational therapy from Utica University, is that how you pronounce it? Yep. Cool. And a self-designed master's degree through Buffalo State College. He is also an author and has written The Handbook for Healthy Living with a Mood Disorder and Bipolar Life Hacks, Key to Loving Life with a Bipolar Disorder. OTs love life hacks. And also award winning Mubu The Morph Children's Book Series. Steve believes that successfully living with a condition is not merely managing and coping with its symptoms. It requires adaptability to change, mechanisms for managing challenges, and development of skills for fulfilling life. Steve uses his professional experiences as an OT and personal experiences uh, as a certified peer specialist to advocate the evolution of mental health care. And he lives and works in Buffalo, New York. So welcome, 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 Steve and Sasha. 
We're just going to be having a conversation today here, guys. So I've got some questions to ask my guests today. Um, but during our practice talk, they ask a lot of questions for each other. So let's, um, let's totally encourage that. And then about half an hour before the end, this is an hour and a half session, we'll open the floor up to you all. So if you want to ask some questions, please put them in the Q&A box. Not the chat box, please use that just to chat amongst each other and comment. But if you've got a question for our guests, please put it in the Q&A. So how about we get started? I love it. Um, yes. Shall we just start with just a super open question and maybe you guys can, I've read, but I want to hear from you, introducing yourselves and letting us know about your personal journey and, and what's led you to be here where you are today. Um, let's start with Sasha. Yeah, all right. Hey, um, I just wanna say that I'm really honored to be here and I love ISPS and I love all the work you're doing, Leah, because I feel like I'm watching you behind the scenes, just like doing a lot of stuff like this, like bringing interesting people together and it feels really good to be a part of it. And Stephen, I'm really honored to just be on the panel with you and I'm psyched about this conversation. Um, okay, so briefly, you know, the, the, the way I, the, the way I, I, I tell the story, because it's like, you know, I've told the story a bunch of times. Um, I ended up in the psychiatric system. I was locked up in a psychiatric hospital when I was 18 years old. Uh, the police found me walking on the subway tracks in New York City, and I thought that the world was about to end and that I was being broadcast live on primetime television on all the channels. And I thought there was like microscopic translators, you know, transmitters implanted under my skin recording my thoughts for some top secret branch of the CIA. Um, I spent some months locked up in a psych ward and got given a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, you know, very common for, you know, people to be teenagers getting diagnoses like that. Um, and then, you know, I got out and I spent a bunch of years not doing that, like doing everything I could to try and avoid that. Um, I think the, an important part of my story is that I came of age in New York City and was part of this larger cultural, I grew up in the, the, the punk rock scene in New York and there was like um, the, the anarchist squatter movement that I was a part of as a teenager. And that really affected my thinking and the way I thought about myself. And so when they told me in the psych ward that I had a serious biological brain disease and I was gonna be sick for the rest of my life, um, you know, I told them they were full of shit. I can curse, right? Yeah. I told them they were, I told them, you know, like that, like, I just didn't believe it. But I got locked up a number of times after that. I finally eventually was like, uh, you know, trying to make sense of my diagnosis. And, you know, that like I had, I, I had all these really great ideas, you know, in typical bipolar fashion, but then I would just crash and burn and be suicidally depressed. And um, I ended up writing an article about it. And all these people read that article we started this thing called the Icarus Project, you know, like you said in my bio, it was like a network of, of, of uh, you know, it was like we created a network of support. And that's like, if we're, if this is a webinar about peer support, that's where my understanding of peer support came from. It was like, there was a bunch of us, we were all, we all had these diagnoses or it had like these intense experiences and we were supporting each other virtually online but then also we would get together in groups and do it and then inspire other people to start groups so that that's like that's like kind of the important stuff and then you know i ended up after a bunch of years going to social work school um because i wanted to be a therapist and and uh i ended up working in the public mental health system for a number of years um which was a very interesting experience uh, I, I was training peer workers on first episode psychosis teams, and I learned a lot about how the system works and thinks about people. And um, I got to like, you know, one of the highlights was definitely like getting to work with Pat Deegan, who's on, I see is on this call. Um, but there was also some really low points too of just being like the one person in, you know, at the psychiatric institute on my team who was diagnosed with a serious mental illness. And I feel like people didn't know what to make of me. Like, I think people were kind of scared of me sometimes, you know? Um, so yeah, and then I, I moved out to California, 
started a private practice, happy to talk more about it, but there's my, there's like a very brief kind of like my, my trajectory and my relationship to peer support. Thank you, thank you. I, I want to ask you so much, but I'm going to open the floor to Stephen to introduce himself and then we'll kind of, we'll get talking. Thank you, Sasha. Stephen, same question to you. Tell us about your journey and what led you to being here. Definitely. And I will, I, I want to say this is that the more that I've been exposed to these kinds of groups and peer movement and all that kind of stuff, the more humbled I am just realizing what people have been through, what people have done, um, how things have advanced and evolved from years ago till now. And it's just very, it's just very, very humbling. Um, just a real quick introduction for myself. My original master's degree was to be a teacher, earth science, secondary education. And because I'm, a, I'm an Eagle Scout and I really enjoyed the outdoors and this whole sense of the the, teach, the teachers that I thought that were really cool were the ones that brought real world experiences into the classroom. So for my master's degree, I did a self-designed one through Buffalo State College, my first master's, where I hiked, bike, sailed, and canoed from Buffalo, New York, down to Key West, Florida. It took me, yeah, it was pretty cool. It took me about eight months. Uh, I studied the geology along the way as part of my master's degree, uh, gave presentations to over a thousand youth on the values of volunteerism and education, and really felt like I was on top of the world. Uh, two years later, I was hospitalized with severe depression and diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And that was a pretty uh, crumbling experience because here I was with a master's degree and yet had no idea how to make life work. Um, I ended up joining a vocational program and then found out about occupational therapy. And in my studies to become, because what, I, what my vocational counselors helped me realize is the thing that I get passionate about is helping people do what's important to them. And so occupational therapy was a little bit more one-on-one -on -one or small groups versus managing like six classes of 30 people and all that other kind of stuff. So uh, it was my studies with occupational therapy that I really started to learn techniques to work with a condition instead of coping with symptoms of an illness. And that reframe really um, helped shift the trajectory of my life. Um, I, after occupational therapy and getting my license there, I was working in that field, found out about the peer movement. I, I really had no idea about the peer movement when I was first diagnosed. And it was only afterwards that I found out about it. And that got to be very freeing uh, because I was seeing people who had a similar diagnosis that were doing well and having the quality of life that I wanted versus the medical model, which was you're, you're sick, trying to get well with something that you'll never get fully well with. And it just, that paradigm shift made a huge difference for me in my trajectory. Um, I, I worked in a psychiatric hospital for about seven and a half years. And now I work, uh, help train um, practitioners with a psychiatric rehabilitation approach. And, and so I, so I do stuff kind of with the system. Um, because I really believe that it's important to evolve the system to help things go to the next level. And uh, so that's a little bit of a history about me. Thank you both. There's, there's a lot of commonality in your story. Um, Stephen, I'm, I'm curious to hear more about your travels because I know Sasha's also done a lot of travels through his journey too. So can you tell me a little bit more about that crazy journey that you did and, and kind of what how your perspectives grew traveling around the country sure. about yourself, about other people. Yeah. So one of the things that it really, um, for me, it was all, it was adventure was big and exploring was big. And I, you know, it was, it was like before I was, before I had the crash of depression, it was a lot, I was more hypomanic. So I had a lot more energy. I had a lot more creativity. I could, I could see out of the box things, pull stuff together to make them work. And one of the exciting things about traveling is really helped me see that, you know, people are icebergs and depending on where you are, uh, people have very different histories. And there's even, you know, when you go to different places, there's different cultures wherever you go and different perspectives and different thought processes. And it was just very um, enlightening and eye-opening to see how much variety there is in people's experiences and pasts and how that can affect things. Um, just kind of a real quick thing that was kind of cool was